Hello everyone, welcome back to this short tutorial from Pathology Made Simple at ilopathology.com. In this session, let's learn about gross and microscopic features of granulation tissue. So, what is granulation tissue? Granulation tissue is a type of tissue which is formed on the surfaces of a wound during the healing process. Right? So, we need to understand that this is the hallmark of healing process. The word granulation tissue is derived from Latin word, Latin, no, it's a split of granulum and asio. Granulum meaning small grain and asio meaning an action or process. So basically, granulation means process action of forming granules or grain like structures, which is actually a textured rough surface similar to collection of small grains or beads. That is what you see on the surfaces of the wound. So, what are the features of a granulation tissue? We, uh, the most important feature is angiogenesis, where there is formation of new capillaries, which is from the pre-existing blood vessels. So, why are these capillaries formed in the process of wound healing? That's for nutrition by supplying oxygen to the tissue. The second one is fibrogenesis, where there is proliferation of fibroblasts, using extracellular matrix like components like collagen. And that provides strength and framework to the tissue which is being repaired. The third one is the presence of inflammatory cells, which is usually a mixed inflammation comprising of lymphocytes, plasma cells, neutrophils, eosinophils, and macrophages. This is basically a part of immune response. The last one is the extracellular matrix itself, which basically provides structural integrity. So, you should know that all these components are part of formation of granulation tissue. So, you should also know that it is a temporary tissue because this eventually gets replaced by a scar tissue through the process of own contraction and re-epithelialization. How does granulation tissue appears on gross? So, that's an illustration of gross picture of granulation tissue. The color is pink to red. As I told you, it has a granular structure which, which looks as if you know you see a small grains of tissue there, soft to form in consistency. It fills the shape of the bone. The granulation tissue takes the shape of the wound. It's never above the level of the surface of wound. And you know, they can bleed easily even with minor trauma. So that's how a granulation tissue looks like. So this is a pink granular appearance on the surface of the healing wounds. So, microscopically, this is an illustrated image showing proliferating capillaries. You see that there are lots of mixed inflammatory cells. The small dots are the lymphocytes. You have these plasma cells. You have these neutrophils, eosinophils and macrophages as part of immune response. You find these fibroblasts and that's a very thin collagen which is being formed by these fibroblasts. And most of the times, the stroma of the granulation tissue is edematous. That's because of capillaries which are newly formed, you know, they are very leaky in nature. That's why you see edematous stroma in granulation tissue. Again, you can find the histological picture of granulation tissue. You find these thin walled capillaries, you find these small fibroblasts, and lots of inflammatory cells in the background. Again, the stroma is edematous. So, when you learn about granulation tissue, you need to know two important things. The first one is exuberant granulation tissue. What is that? This is the formation of excessive amounts of granulation tissue. One of the complications of own healing disease, one of the complications of tissue repair disease, where the granulation tissue protrudes above the level of surrounding skin. Why it is important? That's because, you know, this is also called as proud flesh. So, this is a normal granulation tissue. Look at this. There is excessive proliferation of granulation tissue which is seen above the level of the own surface. The importance of knowing this is it basically blocks re-epithelialization. So, there is no closure of own. That's why it's very important to know about this condition called exuberant granulation tissue. All you have to do is just scrape off the exuberant granulation tissue and then allow the re epithelialization to take place. Sometimes granulation tissues can be you know, confused with capillary hemangioma. This is one of the differential diagnoses of 
capillary hemangioma students often make a mistake of telling that this is a capillary hemangioma now you need to know the difference between capillary hemangioma and granulation tissue what are the differences capillary hemangioma is a benign vascular tumor okay usually they are you know circumscribed lesion right can you see this just beneath the surface they are formed of densely packed capillaries with a lobular arrangement that's important and the most important one being very minimal inflammatory cells okay unlike in granulation tissue you find lots and lots of inflammation capillary hemangioma do not contain inflammation and if at all they contain they contain very minimal inflammation particularly at the involution phase of capillary hemangioma that's you know capillary hemangioma you need to know this difference granulation tissue they are haphazardly placed you know proliferating capillaries unlike the lobular arrangement of capillary hemangioma here and granulation tissue contains lots and lots of inflammatory cells like capillary hemangioma let's now see how as a student you can write a granulation tissue this is a video illustration of granulation tissue Thank you for watching. If you like this video, hit the like button. Do comment if you have anything to ask for. Please do subscribe if you find this channel useful. And don't forget to share if you find this video useful. Thank you.